Energy fans, welcome to The Boost. My name is Brent. And my name is George. And we're getting you up to speed with everything you need to know about your guys in green. I'm wearing white today, though. So am I. Yeah. Well, it's because it's hot outside. It's hot and it reflects the heat. It's not solar absorbative. Right. Yes. Good word, absorb, absorb, absorbative. Ab absorbative. I just made that up. I think that's a chemical. Yes. Uh, made by DuPont, actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Funny you should... Mention that. Hey, uh, the Oklahoma City Energy have been hot. They've been playing left and right, winning games, drawing games. Uh, since last we talked, they have actually had two games. One, a USL battle. One, a international friendly. Let's start with the USL game because that was big. Vancouver came in top of the table. Top of the table. In the uh, USL West and played a pretty entertaining match with Oklahoma City. It was a real good match. OKC really, they held their own with the best in the West. Uh, Vancouver, you know, played played a great game. OKC played a great game. It was very exciting. Um, as exciting as a 1-1 game can be at times, it would, Jimmy said it was going to be a, a very entertaining game. And you see on paper a 1-1 match, and you're like, oh, that's not very exciting. But it really was. Both teams had a lot of chances. Yeah, for a 1-1 match, it, it, there was quite a few chances. And, and good speed from Vancouver, good speed and defense from Energy, you know, a little bit of scoring. You had some, you know, some of those <gasps> type of moments. Um, you know, it was good. It was, a, it was an entertaining one. I have a lot of <gasps> moments. Yeah. But not always watching soccer. Well, you know, it's, 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 it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, Coy Craft, huge goal for Oklahoma City. He continues to shine when he gets playing time with OKC, but right now I guess he's with the uh, U.S. national team for his age group. So uh, we won't see him in the next couple games, but good to have him back for that game. It's great to have Coy back. Yeah, big goal by him, and he, came, he, he gave the energy a, a real charge offensively, something mm -hmm. that, they, that they needed. Um, yeah, he was very exciting to watch, and he produced a couple of those. <gasps> Mm -hmm. moments. Very true. Uh, had a little <gasps> when I talked to Jimmy after the game because Jimmy not real happy about the output. Very very soft performance the first 35 minutes and you know we got we got to do a better job to invest a little bit harder in, in the beginning of the, the games to, to benefit from that later in the game. I thought we we're trying to put them under pressure the last 20 minutes but we didn't invest enough in, in the beginning. You know we never worn them out. You know, we're, we played too slow. They didn't use any, a lot of energy, and, and we should have done a better job on that in, in first half. Right now, very disappointed. Uh, Got to obviously go back and evaluate and look at the game again. But I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed right now. That's the feeling I'm, I have here. I, I know that we as a team can do a lot better than what we did tonight. It's not that the guys didn't try. We, we tried, but it was not our day today. Oklahoma City would have liked to get a victory in that. A draw is okay at home, especially against a really good team. But uh, I think later on in the year they might look back at that game saying, eh, we might should have had a victory in that one. Yeah, yeah. You look at those games, a, 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 a draw at home is one thing. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not a negative thing. It's not as bad as a loss. Um, but, you know, when you, when you play a team in, in, in their park and they come to your park, you know, you want to win the one at yours and get the draw at theirs. So, you know, technically Vancouver did what they were probably looking to do. Energy probably fell a little bit short, but still, it was a good match against a top top of the table team. Yeah, what I like their do? kits too. Their kits were very similar to those of the Energy. Yeah, nice kits with yeah. the uh, the Bell logo on there. Yeah, yeah and matching boots. Boots. Yep. Uh, so that one went into the one-one draw category, and then Oklahoma City turns right back around and plays what really was the largest, most anticipated, biggest international friendly in Sooner State soccer history. Chivas. Chivas. Club Deportivo Guadalajara, a.k.a. Chivas. Huge. 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 Taft Stadium was rocking in it was. red and white. Well, what, what surprised me is, you know, we went to all those different events that were associated with the week of Chivas, and every single one of those had Chivas fans out in droves to yes. get autographs, to get selfies. It was crazy. Yeah, coming down the escalator in the airport, mm -hmm. you'd think Justin Bieber was in town. And some of those guys probably had a Bieber-esque haircut. I would, I would agree. Yeah. Uh, can they dance the way Bieber can? Because he's a virtuoso. I don't know. But uh, it really was. It was great to see soccer support. They might be able to dance like Bieber, but there's no way that they can play basketball like Bieber. That's very true. I, I actually hear Bieber actually has skills on the court. Oh, he's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's. Do you celebrate his entire catalog? I, I celebrate his entire playbook. Wow. Okay, very nice. Yes. Very nice. Except for the one where he gets on the airplane and... Anyway, yeah. uh, but we digress. Chivas, huge match. Fan support was gargantuan. A sellout here at Taft. 
And it really was testament not just to the popularity of Chivas, but what the popularity of soccer truly is in Oklahoma City. Yeah, it was a great testament to the popularity of the sport here. And again, it was it was an atmosphere that, that I personally had never seen in Oklahoma City mm -hmm. regarding soccer. Uh, fans came out, they lined up, they were, they were you know, basically uh, just anywhere Chivas was, they were waiting in droves to get a glimpse of those players. The match itself, not the most exciting. And Jimmy told me afterwards he was actually experimenting with a set that uh, they, quote, plan to use against the very good offensive teams where they actually add another defenseman back there. It's almost five deep on the back line. So uh, it's something that worked very well because the one nothing score – and, and the goal itself by Omar Bravo, who, of course, is well-celebrated, as well as should be, um, wasn't spectacular by any means. No, it was not a spectacular goal. And defensively, OKC played extremely well. So, mm -hmm. you know, Jimmy set might, might, might have been a good call. Yeah, it definitely was. And he experimented with a lot of different faces. We saw some PDL players in that yeah. game. Uh, we saw Jacob Lissick in goal, who, who was breathtaking. Jacob Lissick was phenomenal yeah. in that. Yes, mm -hmm. total breathtaking. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, several of those moments yes, as well. You. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it really was. But uh, it was good to see, and afterwards, talking with players and coaches, they were just happy with the atmosphere and to play in a, a match that big. Uh, <laughs> five years ago, I never would have thought I'd been on the field with Chivas. Um, you know, those are, those are teams and players that you see on TV only, and you never think you're going to be on the same pitch as them. And uh, so now we were, and, you know, all of us are going to remember this night, and it, it was a great night. We know that the interest for soccer is growing uh, fast in, in Oklahoma City. And we'll obviously love to have those, some of those Chivas fans to be our supporters in, in Oklahoma City. Nothing, nothing wrong with supporting two teams. And uh, I hope they'll come back because they're a part of uh, a great night. I have a feeling we might see some more of these international friendlies come our way. I think you're probably right about mm -hmm. that. We'll keep you up to speed with anything that comes out of that. All right, we have to take a quick time out. When we return... We're going to get you up to speed with the week that was in the USL and also get you up to speed on a big grudge match for Oklahoma City that's right around the corner. I'm Brent. I'm George. We'll be right back. We will. Back streets, back. Okay. I think it's all right. I get that wrong every time. Across, go to bank off your errand list for good. Did you know you can monitor account balances, transfer money, deposit checks, pay bills, and more any time of day from anywhere in the world? It's possible with mobile banking from First Fidelity Bank. It's another way FFB gives you personal local bank service with big bank products. Visit ffb.com mobile and learn more today. Welcome back to The Boost, everyone. That's George. And that's Brent. And we're getting you up to speed with everything you need to know about your guys in green. Let's get you up to speed with the USL first, though, because as I was talking with some of the players uh, getting ready for this next match against Rio Grande Valley at home, I kind of referenced the fact that you're done with cup games. Mm -hmm. You're done with international friendlies. Yep. And now you can really hunker down and concentrate on the USL schedule. From, from here on out, it's all about USL. It's good. It's yeah, it's good. Yes. And the USL uh, season and highlights have been uh, spectacular as we go along. Let's get you up to speed with the game. I, I wouldn't normally show Pittsburgh at Rochester, but you've got to see the set piece. You know, set piece is a half a goal. Uh, a double header. Connor Branson. They played a double header? No, they had a double header. Yeah, they had you a think double header. Baseball, Two games. This is soccer. That oh. means they head to head. Okay. That sounds like two games. All right, but watch it again. There's Connor, no way to not make this sound like two games. George, I will, I will slap you. Okay, go Connor ahead. Branson to Corey Herzog in relation to Whitey Herzog. Uh, Another baseball guy. Thank, yeah, I know. I threw that out to keep the baseball yeah. motif going. Well done. Uh, finishes in a 2-1 Rochester win, but you don't see a double header for a goal very often. No, you don't. You don't. They never play two games to have one goal. No, very true. <laughs> Seattle at Swope Park. This is Chris Turpic. Oh, huge. He had the bandana on. Uh, Mr. Bonner would be proud. 
Swope Park wins this one over Seattle 2 0. And then finally, Orange County at San Antonio. You've got to see the footwork here by Mr. Francois. That would be Jacques Francois, no relation to Jack Damerel. Uh, to Michael Reed. Yes, goal time. San Antonio wins at 3 2. Nice. OC is coming in here in uh, what, three weeks? Yes, and San Antonio is our next road trip. So. Oh. Very important on both of those teams. Yeah. Let's take a look at the Western Conference standings. Vancouver still top of the table with their unbelievable kits and boots. 29 points. Uh, LA Galaxy with their 75 games played in second place with 26. OKC in 20, but they are uh, three to four games back of just about every team in the top part of the Western Conference standings. The Rio Grande Valley right now is at 23, three points up on OKC, but they I think they've played three more games. They have. Uh, Rio Grande Valley also, I'm, I don't know about you, but I feel like there's some payback that's got to happen this weekend. Oh, we'll talk about that here in a second. On the eastern side, Louisville still on top, 35 points. NYC 31 and Cincinnati in the third spot with 30 points. So the east is pretty congested at the top of the table there. All right, let's talk about that Rio Grande Valley team because when last and the only time we played Rio Grande Valley, it was mm-hmm. down there in the One Star State, very yeah. close to the border, and it was hot, it was gross, it was mosquito-ridden, and it was a game that Oklahoma City flat out just didn't play very well. Yeah, they did not play very well at all. It's probably their their poorest performance of the of the, the season to date. Probably the, the the worst performance since the uh, the shellacking that they took last year in Louisville, if mm-hmm. you remember. Yes. Um, yeah, it wasn't good. And I gotta think that that you know the guys are are just ready to put it behind them and really you know get some redemption. Yes, Jimmy said flat out after the game they didn't play well. They got beat by a better team that night. And talking with both players and coaches this week, you know there's something extra coming into this game. I, I mean, they're a good possession team. They have some quality. That's what I know about them. And we played them. We didn't, you know, have a good showing against them. And they, they beat us up for it. So I know me uh, in particular, I'm very excited for this game. I think the guys are, are ready to get some redemption. And hopefully we can come out on top this time. Now remember, that game will be at 7.30. We are now into July. Hard to believe. I- Crazy. Uh, and we are getting into the summer kickoff times, which is 7.30. Sun goes down a little bit more. It's a little bit more comfy, cooler. Uh, we get out of here a little bit later, but no. Nobody's keeping score. No, no, not at all. Uh, hey, hey, one one big thing to mention. Guess what is happening after that match? What is happening after that I match? I want you to guess. Hmm. Rio Grande, does that have anything to do with Rio Grande Valley? No. Hmm. Or Justin Bieber. Or doubleheaders. The beginning of the girlfriend's birthday week. No. It is, by the way. Oh, well, yeah. but that's not it. Okay, what is it? Fireworks, man. Oh! <laughs> Rockets red glare. Did you know that only 40% of the American population can recite the Star Spangled Banner verbatim? I would have thought it was less. Yes. Uh, so that's great. And did you know the Star Spangled Banner song is only like one-eighth of the entire poem? I did not know that. Uh, I did not know that. That is a little weird. Well, that is, that that is, is strange. Wrong. Yeah, I uh, learned that uh, watching some history documentary the other day. It's a anyway. good, good Carson right there. Uh, <laughs> that 90% of our fan base probably has no idea who that is. Uh, they know who, yeah, Carson, who, Daly? Carson Daly. They know That's who Carson That's not Daly Carson is. Daly, yes. folks. No. Much more talented man, J- Johnny Carson, much more talented. Yes. Much more talented. Uh, 7.30, Rio Grande Valley, Oklahoma City. Tickets still available. You can call us 235-KICK. Also, energyfc.com. And tickets uh, for this match will be good. And you got to come out. It's summertime. All the other sports are gone. It doesn't matter where certain free agents are going to be signing. This is where the action's at. And like we said, this is a grudge match. Guys have something to prove. This one could be your sleeper excitement match of the summer. All right, we're going to take a quick time out when we return. Much more to come on the boost. We'll get you up to speed when we return. That's George. And that is Brent. Back in a flash.
Mow well fast and save big right now at P&K Equipment. Breeze through your yard with a John Deere residential zero turn starting at $24.99 or get a riding lawn tractor starting at only $14.99. It's not how fast you mow, it's how well you mow fast. And P&K Equipment has the mower and accessories you need for any size yard. You've got a yard. It's time you own it. In Oklahoma, John Deere starts with P&K. Welcome back to The Boost, everyone. I'm Brent. I'm George. And we're getting you up to speed with everything you need to know about your guys in green. And we talk a lot about the players on the field, but we have to talk about some of the players off the field, as in the players that make soccer a reality here in Oklahoma. And we've had the chance to do that over the days and weeks. Uh, you know, the ownership here with the Oklahoma City Energy Integral and bringing soccer, raising awareness, and raising the level of soccer in Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah, the level of soccer here has just shot through the stratosphere over the last three years. And, and, you know, it's not necessarily just from the guys on the pitch. It's it's a lot of people that make that possible. It is. And a lot of people includes corporate sponsors because those corporate dollars make it possible for these games to be played. I had the chance to talk to one of the big sponsors for the Oklahoma City Energy, but one of the biggest soccer fans in Oklahoma about the future of the great game right here in the Sooner State. Steve, thanks for coming in today. Sure. Appreciate happy to be here. Uh, soccer. It is a game that I know is near and dear to your heart. What's your background with the game? Uh, I've grown up in Central Texas. It was my sport of choice. You know, I mean, I grew up in a football state, uh, but quickly fell in love with the world's most popular sport. Played it all through high school, believe it or not, still play to this day in Oklahoma City area men's uh, adult league teams. The state of soccer in Oklahoma, you've obviously spent some time in Kansas. You're a season seat holder with Sporting KC. What do you feel like the state of soccer is in Oklahoma right now? Well, I, I think it's... it's uh, it's on, the, it's on the rise, and dramatically so. As you noted, I, I lived in Kansas for uh, about four years and became a Sporting Kansas City season ticket holder and watched the game develop there, watched the enthusiasm from the fans, and, and I think uh, the ownership team here in Oklahoma City has the right vision to replicate that kind of enthusiasm and activity and support here in Oklahoma City. That's what I say. You had a first-hand look at it. Is that something you think that's possible in Oklahoma City? I do, and and I'm I've only been in Oklahoma City for a couple of years now, but I mean some things are readily apparent. Oklahomans love sports. <laughs> that's obvious, and and you see, I've got children that play the game. You see the the great involvement at the youth level. Uh, so I think uh, that and the kind of the can-do spirit of folks in Oklahoma City, you see what's happened in other parts of the city, sort of a, a renaissance. I think it's ripe. I think it's a perfect time to, to grow the game in the city. How important and, and, and do you feel a sense of responsibility as a corporate leader to make sure that the corporate dollars are there to support? Yeah, and, 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 and there's a couple elements there. I mean, our business at AT&T is to connect people to what's important to them. And I don't think there's many areas that you can find where there's more passion than soccer supporters for their team. So it's a logical fit for us. At the same time, we have a very long history of being involved in the communities that we serve. Okay, we're not just running a business with customers here. We live here. We've been part of this community for over 100 years. And so we do feel an obligation to support things that are happening in the community to help the community grow and develop. And this is a great, it meets both of those things, right? It's got the passion points that we like to connect our customers to. We believe in what the ownership team is doing. I think they're going about it the right way. They're not just putting a good product. They're building a great experience. They're weaving themselves into the fabric of the community, and that's very important to us. Good guy, like Sporting KC. We'll be in KC in about a week and a half. Yeah, mm -hmm. heading back. Yeah, I know. Just seems like yesterday. Just seems like, well, it was. It was pretty close. Pretty close, yeah. All right, Rio Grande Valley, 7.30 on Saturday night. Be there, 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 and tune in every week for the boost. Tune in every week for the boost. Uh, go to energyfc.tv. You can watch the, the full interview with Mr. Han and and several others that are hosted spectacularly by none other than this man. It's a good time, folks. And the graphics by this guy. So there you go and, and stuff. Um, that'll be about do it for this edition of The Boost. And we appreciate you tuning in. Tune in next week for another exciting episode of 97X. Bang! The future of rock and roll. And, and soccer. 97X. Bang! The future of rock and roll. Ray, 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 enough already. <laughs>